Good morning students. Welcome to my video lecture on module 2, lecture 3A, Manufacturing of Glass Fibers. This is a part of the postgraduate course Fabrication and Processing of Advanced Composites, ME 61011. I am Nilanjan Das Chakladar of Mechanical Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. Now coming to the talk layout, in this particular talk we will discuss about what are the differences between fibers versus particles versus whiskers and typically we will focus on the glass fibers with its manufacturing and application. Fibers versus particles versus whiskers. Now before we discuss, if we closely observe these three figures, what do we see? So this is some kind of a roll. So these are in a powder form and this is the whiskers which, which are uh, like threads but they are not as long as fibers. So the first one which is the carbon fiber tape it has a width of 6.35 millimeter that is a quarter inch. Fiber diameter is about 10 microns typically we see the carbon fiber diameter of 7 microns and it can be carbon it can be aramid it can be glass and it can be other fibers as well. Whereas for carbon particles the aspect ratio that is the length over diameter that is 1 and the average size is close to in the micro, micrometer range or the millimeter range. Now in case of whiskers I have shown here the silicon carbide whiskers where the length over diameter that is the aspect ratio is 10 to 10,000. That gives an average diameter of 0.1 to 1 micron. Now fibers are measured in terms of linear density. So what is density? Density is say in SI kg per meter cube that means weight per volume but this is linear density that one was volumetric density. So linear density would be kg per unit of distance and there are certain variants called yarn, stows, roving, strand all of this we will discuss uh, soon. Now there is also something called as text number. Now do you remember the word textile? So this text is what is coming as text number. So what is text number? It is the weight per thousand of meter means weight per kilometer, grams per kilometer or kilogram per kilometer. So typically if you go to the market and you want to buy this kind of bobbin they will say how many kilos you want and what is the length it is around one kilometer two kilometers so you get it in this format another weight, weight system is denier where denier is nothing but the distance has been changed to nine kilometers or nine thousand meters okay please remember this next is for the carbon particles it's an activated carbon with diameter of 0.84 millimeters it's manufactured by incomplete combustion and thermal decomposition or thermal decomposition. In case of silicon carbide whisk whiskers the average diameter is 0.8 nanometers. Okay so don't forget it's not 0.8 millimeters it's 0.8 nanometers manufactured by CVD or chemical vapor deposition process. Now coming to manufacturing of glass fibers. So glass fabric was discovered as early as 1893. Then it was commercialized by this famous company, Owens Illinois Glass Company in 1931. Then this Owens Illinois and Corning Glass Works, they merged together in 1938 to form the famous OCF, that's the Owens Corning Fiber Glass. Okay. Now let's look into the manufacturing process. So you will have some animations and other uh, videos on manufacturing of glass fibers in the description below. So please do look into those videos. If you like those channels, please subscribe them. Now what we see, we see the glass, the major ingredient is silica. So we pour silica by batch, then melt it at a temperature of 1370, 1370 degrees Celsius in a furnace. Then we refine it at a very relatively low temperature not a very low temperature 1340 degrees celsius then we keep it on a four hearth where we are actually preparing it to draw fibers from the four hearth okay 
so what is there so the temperature is further less that's around 12 1260 degrees Celsius and then there is winders so you extract and then wind so what is happening in a 4 hertz in a 4 hertz you have you have to cool it so you need a water spray and as you are dragging it so the drag velocity we can see is 60 meters per second so as you are dragging it then you either roll it on a winder like this because say you need long fibers or you can simply chop it to get chopped glass fibers using a direct chopper okay now these fiber diameter they are typically 20 micron in size and it's a function of the hole diameter what is the hole diameter here so these bushing as you can see they have holes okay so this is a function of the hole diameter the temperature the melt viscosity cooling rate drawing velocity and pressure drop so there are a number of parameters on which the fiber diameter depends now an assembly of collimated glass fibers is called yarn toe or strand question is what is collimated collimated simply means they are accurately parallel okay an assembly of collimated yarns is called roving and collimated means it's nearly parallel which we have already uh, explained now here yarn how to remember yarn is a twisted bundle of twisted fibers toe is a bundle of straight fibers bundle of bundle of bundle of twisted fibers is a roving or bundle of yarns is a roving okay similarly we'll see what a strand is so this is a straight fibers you fix one end and twist the other end you get a yarn okay just like what you get in the nylon row now this is again straight fibers you stretch it you get the toe remember it is toe t o w now this is a strand and this is a roving okay now glass fibers their properties and their values so you don't have to memorize you don't need to memorize this in detail but have a good understanding what are the typical characteristics of glass fibers so fiberglass diameter typically it is 14 microns here it has given a range of 10 to 20 micron text number 600 1200 2400 gram per kilometer so carefully remember the unit it's gram per kilometer yield of fibers what is yield of fibers that is how many meters we can produce out of a lot so yield of fibers is essentially having a dimension which is just inverse of the dimension of the text so inverse of text gives the yield common yield of glass fibers so 900 450 to 225 900 stands for 90,000 yards per pound okay and one yard per pound is 496055 over tex now if in an exam you are asked to find out the tex or yield you will be given with this formula now types of glass fibers this is very important so there are different types of glass fibers e glass s glass ecr glass a glass d glass r glass now how would you remember the names e stands for electrical s stands for structural ecr stands for electrical chemical resistance grade that means we are talking about simply corrosion okay a glass that's an alkali base or alkali lime grade d glass that's a dielectric and R is a reinforcement grid. Okay, so let's look at once again E glass, electrical, S glass, structural, ECR, electrical, chemical resistance, A glass, alkali lime, D glass, dielectric, R reinforcement. Now E glass is made of alumino borosilicate. So we have already seen that the silica is the main major ingredient of glass fibers. For electrical properties, it's an alumina borosilicate, but the cost is very high. For S glass, it is alumino silicate 
with calcium oxide, magnesium oxide. It's low cost but high tensile strength. ECR alumino lime silicate with alkali oxides to increase the corrosion resistance. Alkali lime grade, so it's a little boron oxide. Dielectric grade, it's borosilicate, low dielectric constant. And finally, the reinforcement grade, which is alumino silicate again, calcium oxide and magnesium oxide. Now, application of glass fibers. So, before understanding the application of glass fibers, we need to know what are the limitations. So the limitation is the stiffness of glass fibers are pretty low. There is high moisture sensitivity and abrasiveness is low or it is low in scratch resistance. Now think about glass, forget about glass fibers, just think about glass. So glass also have these properties, right? That will all already be there in the glass fibers as well. So application, automobile, leisure boats, passenger ship, aircraft, radomes, and sporting goods. So this is a typical glass fabric and these are applications. Thank you for watching my video. Hope you have enjoyed it. Please add my playlist video lectures of FPAC ME61011 and subscribe to my channel. Do not forget to read the description below. Thank you.